Well, it's such an honor to be here in this historical consultation. I really believe that the Lord is changing the atmosphere, not only, as Peter was saying, of the United States, but among the nations. So I'm with my beautiful wife. I would like that she stand. Peter was saying that I fell in love and I received supernaturally the Portuguese. So she helped me a lot with that. Her name is Deborah. She's uh, with me this time. Okay, I would like to honor my spiritual father and mentor, Dr. Peter Wagner. I met him two years ago. In fact, I, made, I met him in Dr. Chan a conference, and we got connected. And it was something very prophetic because Peter spent 16 years in Bolivia, and I was born in Bolivia. So I really believe, and I'm convicted about that, that I'm part of his harvest. So when I met him, I told him that. You know, I know that you spent 16 years in my country. I know that it, it, was, an, it was a very difficult time because the conditions, the infrastructure of my nation. But I want to tell you, I'm part of your harvest. And since that moment, we began to work together. So it's such an honor to be here with him. Thank you so much, Apostle Chuck, for uh, hosting us. And it's such an honor also to be with this amazing team of uh, speakers. Dr. Chiang was here, and he's one of my mentors also. I have the privilege to be connected with kingdom-minded people, uh, key leaders that are doing kingdom advancement in, in the nations. So last night we arrived here, and when we arrived to the hotel, I received a calling. Dr. Peter Wagner was waiting for me. So he told me that he, he had to tell me two things. The first thing, he invited me to have dinner with him. And people that know Dr. Peter Wagner know that those kind of invitations are very, very particular because he brought us to a, a, one of the top 10 steakhouses here in, in Dallas. So when he told me that, he mentioned that, I was very happy that I arrived at the, at the right time. But the sec second thing that he told me, he told me, you know what? One of the speakers couldn't come. So are you ready to handle that? Are you ready to, to share uh, with us? He's supposed to speak on seven mountains. Do you think you could handle that? I say, I will try. And I told him, what do you expect about me? Do you want me to teach or preach? And he told me, please teach. So I told him that I will, I will do my best to don't preach and, and teach. But I, I don't know if I, I, I couldn't handle that. So I will try. Well, when Dr. Peter Wagner uh, told me about the situation of the conference and asked me to, to speak, something that was on my heart uh, came, came to my mind. Since a long time ago, I was thinking about apostolic models. I was thinking about territorial transformation, social transformation, a social reformation. So I really believe that the Lord is raising up apostolic models driven by prophetic processes to replace demonical systems. I believe that the only way that we could see real and sustainable transformation, it is to implementing models. A model, it is the exposure of what we really receive, revelation that we receive, the revelation knowledge that we have. So revelation knowledge without a model, uh, a model is just an illusion. So apostolic models are key for social transformation. Apostolic models will replace, would replace a demonical systems. So I want to, to share some scriptures with you, some scriptures that you know, and I will begin in Ephesians 6.12, a very known passage. When Apostle Paul said that we don't wrestle 
against, fled, uh, uh, against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, against rulers. He gave us a very deep insight about a structure, a spiritual structure, a spiritual government. And he began to, uh, to mention principalities in first place. So this word, this word is a key word. Because this word in Greek is the word arche or archon. So that means first in rank, first in position. So Paul was describing a structure, a spiritual structure, and a spiritual government. And he first mentioned the principalities. But from this word, we have another two words that are key. The word architect and the word archetype. So a principality is not only a spirit or a demon. It is a spiritual structure. It is basically an architect that builds archetypes. So we are dealing, when we talk about apostolic centers, apostolic models, we are dealing with a very high level of spiritual warfare. A warfare that it is going to demand from us to understand the spiritual structure, especially the principalities. So, Paul described in 1 Corinthians 3.10, he described himself as a wise builder. And this word builder is also very important because it's the Greek word architecton. So Paul was describing himself as an architect that could also model or to shape models, to build models. So we are in a battle against principalities, but we have the apostles or the wise builders that they are going to build more that are going to replace the monical system. Principalities, they build the monical systems, but the Lord has his apostles that are going to build a structure that are going to replace, are going to remove, are going to counter the demonical system. So the, the devil he thinks that he owns the world, but he does not own the world. Because the Lord is raising up, as Chuck said, a triumphant reserve that it is going to advance the kingdom in the way that we have never been before. He's raising up apostles, builders, architects, architects that are going to build models that are going to be able to replace the demonical systems. So we are in a warfare that involves prototypes. It's very important that we think in prototypes because for a long time in the apostolic stream we had a lot of revelation without prototypes but this is the season the right season that the lord is raising up the prototypes that are going to replace the demonical system and you are part of all of this season and you are part of what the lord is doing in this season so when we understand that we understand that every culture has an environment, and every environment has it, its cl a climate, and every climate has its atmosphere. So an atmosphere, it is the response to a spiritual government. Everywhere we could find a spiritual government, we are going to find a spiritual atmosphere. If we sustain that spiritual atmosphere, we are going to have a spiritual climate. If we sustain that in, in time, we are going to have a spiritual a, environment. And if we sustain that, we are going to have culture. So when we deal with a, apostolic centers, having in mind that our prototypes, our models that are going to replace demonical systems, we need to understand where are those demonical systems. So every spiritual government has its own atmosphere that sustains, creates the climate, the environment, and finally the culture. So we have seven 
mind molders in society, seven gates, seven spheres in society that shape the culture, seven areas of cultural influence that are what we know, by Lance will know, the seven mountains. So we have the arts and entertainment, we have the business mountain, we have the education mountain, we have the media mountain, we have the family mountain, we have the government mountain, and we have the religion, the mountain of religion. The church is here. So, we are dealing with demonic structure, structures that had been built with principalities. So in every mountain, we have a principality. We have a demonic structure that had been built over the centuries. In the arts and entertainment, we have a principality called Jezebel. I had a long talking, long speaking with one of my good friends, Johnny Enlo, speaking about the spiritual warfare in the seven mountains. So we were discussing which principality fits in every mountain. After a, a long uh, talking, he told me, you know, I try to, to place a principality in every mountain, but I'm not a spiritual warfare guy. So you better uh, suggest if I'm wrong in some of, of these mountains. So I said, I don't think you are wrong, but I think that there are some names that could be fit better in, in those mountains. So we have in the arts and entertainment, we have Jezebel. In the business, we have Mammon. In the education, I really believe that we have the Prince of Greece. Yeah. In the media, I believe that we have Leviathan. In the family, I believe that we have Baal. In the government, Belial. And in the religion, the queen of heaven. So we have principalities all over the seven mountains. So those principalities were shaping the culture. Those principalities were building structures in every area of the society. And those principalities were twisting the truth in those mountains. So, and they were capturing generation after generations in those mountain, mountains. So, the Lord is raising up apostolic models to replace these systems, these demonical systems, raising up wise builders, architects, but, but more than that, an apostolic people. In fact, when Paul Say, when Paul described himself as an apostle, we need to, to realize that that word apostle in Greek it is the word apostolos. And this word has a military context, military background. When Jesus commissioned his disciples as, an, an, as apostles, he was using not a religious terminology. He didn't commission them as priests. He didn't commission them as prophets. He commissioned them as apostles. So this word apostle has its background till Alexander the Great, the Greek emperor. So Alexander the Great used this word in a very, very particular way. He used this word to describe a high level train of generals. So the, the word apostle, it is related to generalship. Alexander the Great, when he wanted to invade a territory, he chose the high level, the, the most high level trained people that he called apostles or apostolos, and he sent them 
out to invade the territory first, second, to plant the flag of the uh, uh, empire, third, to establish a kind of embassy there, and four, to change, to shape the culture. So when Jesus commissioned his apostles, he was thinking about uh, military terminologies. He was sending them out to change, to model, to shape the culture, to shape all the areas of society. So when we talk about apostolic centers and an apostol and apostolic people, we, we are thinking about people that they have been trained, high level training, that they are able to invade the territory, they are able to remove the enemy, to displace the enemy, they are able to plant the kingdom's flag, and they are able to change the culture. So apostolic centers are going to change radically the culture. And Dr. Peter Warner says that if we want to see social transformation, we need to change the seven mountains simultaneously. So I really believe that the Lord is raising up apostolic people all over the seven mountains that they are going to be able to replace the demonical systems and they are going to be able to build kingdom structures, kingdom government that it is going to advance the kingdom. So we have the seven areas, we have the, the seven mountains. Dr. Peter Wagner, this morning he said that one of the differences between a local church and an apostolic center is that an apostolic center not only focus on ecclesiastical activities, but focus on the seven mountains. So, when we talk about apostolic centers, we are talking about models that will host or will train people to invade or penetrate or infiltrate every area of society. But we also talk about a place that society could feel comfortable to go. So he told me, he asked me uh, last night to share with you what's going on in Brazil and uh, specifically with our apostolic center. We had the privilege to begin an apostolic center after hearing him two years ago about the teaching that he made today. So we didn't need to transition a local church to an apostolic center. We began as an apostolic center, understanding that the Lord wanted us to be involved in every area of society. So it was a great advantage for us. It was something that helped us to redeem the time. So what we are doing in Brazil is we understand that two, two principles that are very basic principles but are very important. The first one is that we don't go to the church. We are the church. Everybody knows that, but the way we express that shows us that deep in our mindset we didn't realize that. We don't go to the church. We are the church. We are the community. We are the assembly. The other principle that it is very important, it is that we don't go to the temple. We are the temple. So we gather in a facility, but the facility is not holy. We are holy. We sanctify the facility. So when the Lord asks us to build an apostolic center, we understand that he will uh, give, give us a place that we could use not only for gatherings in the mountain of religion, but a platform that could host a different kind of activities that are related all over the seven mountains. In fact, we were thinking in society that we decided to don't call our center an apostolic center. We call an integrated center. Because if, if people in society, they have a difficulty to go to a place called church, 
we, we believe that it, it will be more difficult to them to go to a place that it is an apostolic center. So we decided to call integrated center, an integrated center, a center that integrates a different kind of activities in the same place. Our activities that are related to the arts, the business, the education, the media, the family, the government, and also the activities that are related to the church. So I will, I will, I would uh, uh, ask people uh, that I I gave them my logos. I will, I would like to share with you the logo that the Lord gave us, so we could understand better this concept. Our center, it is called Action Center, not an apostolic center, but you're going to see why. Action Center, because we believe that social transformation is related to action, not only to prayer, not only to worshiping, but to act. This is time for action. So, but in, in that name, Action, we place the apostolic. So, Action means the apostolic capable to transform and impact the orientation of the nations. So, we have, it is in Portuguese, the Action Integrated Center. If you see, you are going to see that the uh, T, it is related to the seven, because we believe that the Lord placed us in that region to shape the cult, to shape the seven mountains. So, you're going to see also that we have a play that uh, uh, implies the action. So we are people of action. We are people of destiny. We are people that are trained. No, no, not yet, please. Go back to the first. So you're going to see many branches. Yeah, there. Different color of many branches. Those colors are related to the different kind of activities that we are hosting in our facility, in our building. So we are doing different kind of activities that are related to the seven mountains. But basically, what we believe is that the Lord called us to have an educational system for that region, an educational model that will, will replace the philosophy, Luciferian philosophy. So, we have the, the action integrated center. So when people ask, where are you going? They don't say we are going to the church. We are going to an integrated center. What are you going to do? Well, we have different kind of activities. In the mountain of business, we have, pro we have developed programs, especially coaching programs. I, I don't know if you know, but coaching is the career that it is growing faster than any other career all over the world. Coaching, it is something that people are very interested to, to, to know and to experience because basically coaching, it is the process that people enter in to maximize their potential. So we have a classes, we have courses in the Action Integrated Center, and people go to have coaching sessions. We have different kind of coaching uh, sessions. We, we have life coaching, we have executive coaching, we have career coaching, we have financial coaching. So people go to the facility and they receive training in coaching they receive training in finances. So we are shaping with education the mountain of business. And we believe that with that kind of a structure, we are helping people to replace the structure of mammon over the society. We also have programs of entrepreneurship. But we have more activities than that. We have also activities that are related to beauty. We call, in fact, Action Beauty. It is an special event for women. So women go to learn how to do makeup, 
how to uh, improve their uh, personal uh, uh, style, how to they improve their, 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 their uh, hair. And it is uh, in that activity we have different kind of professionals involved uh, teaching them how to improve their image. We have also an activity for women, for women empower women, to empower uh, women to be business women because we really believe that uh, uh, business people and business women are going to advance the kingdom in this season. We have also psychologist activities in the Action Center. So we have a team of uh, psychologists that they attend people. And something that is very, very uh, interesting, it is that we don't preach directly the gospel. We teach people in different, different areas. And we made all the eff efforts to be excellent. So people could pick that something different is happening there, the spirit of, of excellence. And the most of them, at the end of that kind of, of meetings, they ask us, why, why this kind of activity it is so different? And in that moment, we preach the gospel. We are more interested in social transformation than only in evangelize them. We uh, we want to show them a different culture, a culture of excellence that they need to see the excellence of the kingdom. Like in the book of Esther, you don't, you don't see the name of God explicit. You, but you see that all the book reveals the king and his kingdom. So we are doing, we are doing that. We have activities, I mean, we, we have activities coaching career. To help people to discover, to realize what is the best career that they could follow. So, we are doing that in the, in the seven mountains. Especially we are focused on the education mountain. It is a, a kind of education system. But we also have activities in the mountain of religion. In the mountain of religion, now please, could you uh, place the next logo? We have what we call our community, Action Community. It's a branch of the Action Integrated Center. This is the functional equivalent of a church. So you're going to see that it is basically the same logo, but we have people involved. Because we learned from Dr. Peter Wagner that an apostolic center, he needs, also, it, he needs to attend people uh, like, the, like the local church does, uh, does with funerals, with weddings, counseling, all, of, all, all that kind of activities. So our model, and I'm saying our model, I'm not saying that it is the model to, to shape the seven mountains. It is to create a platform that many kinds of activities could happen in the same place and people from society could come to receive training, but in the middle of that, they are going to pick another kind of atmosphere. They are going to be imparted through the Holy Spirit and they are going to see the excellence of the kingdom. So we are advancing the kingdom through this kind of a, a structure through this kind of a, a educational a system. And to fi finalize this, I would like to, to say something. There are three things or three ways to create a momentum, a spiritual momentum, or a, a spiritual breakthrough over a, a region. The first one is rebuking the demonical spirits or principalities. But the problem is that if we only do that, the principalities could have again influence over the people because they didn't change their behavior. There's another way. We could set apostolic rank in, in, that, in that region. And we are going to see how the regions are improving. But there, there's a third way to do that I believe that this is what we are learning here. The third way is building models 
kingdom models driven by prophetic process that we replace and counter demonical systems. They, they are going to uh, replace, substitute the machines that the principalities create to shape people's ideology. They are going to replace the teachings that the principalities created along the history and along the centuries and I believe that that's, that's the most effective way to create a spiritual momentum, a spiritual breakthrough, and social transformation. And Ryan, he was mentioning about piercing the darkness. Elaine, he was mentioning about uh, having community centers. So these kind of things are very, very similar and are part of the, of the big uh, puzzle. So Chuck said a few minutes ago that they hosted a kind of activity here. So I believe that the Lord is leading his church to understand that it is time to be innovative, to have new ideas, to be creative, to reach the society and to, uh, to, uh, to shift the atmosphere, atmosphere among the nations. Thank you so much.